Okay, class. Let's go ahead and examine our last question, our last page. Um, the directions say to examine the given situation and complete the following. Okay, so Mr. Cortez drove for five hours. At the end of two hours, he had driven 90 miles. Um, after five hours, he had driven 225 miles. Okay, so the very first thing we have to identify is what is considered the independent variable and what is considered the dependent variable. Okay, so is the amount of hours dependent on the amount of miles or is the in amount of miles dependent on the amount of hours? Right, think about when you look at a graph, what, the, what do you think the x-intercept or what do you think the x-axis should always be uh, representing and what do you think the y axis in this case should represent so if you said time for the x-axis that is correct right the time is always going to be the independent variable and the miles driven is dependent on the amount of time you've been driving so let's go ahead and write that the independent variable is the time in hours. The dependent variable in this case is the miles driven. Okay, and go ahead and fill out the chart. It says at the end of two hours, you have you had driven 90 miles. So let's write 90 for two. Three is 135. Um, well, if this is linear, right, um, this would be four for 180 because two is already 90. Um, five would be 225 as stated in the context. And eight would be a combination of four and another four, which is uh, 360. Now, if you think about it, this person is driving at 45 miles per hour, which is kind of slow. So I can't really imagine driving that long for these amount of hours and only driving at 45 miles per hour. But um, can time versus distance driven be modeled by a linear function? Well, in this case, yes, right? Um, by a linear function, you would say yes. Uh, the, the equation or the function is, now notice how I immediately calculated the uh, unit rate um, just by realizing that the ratio of 90 over 2 and was consistent to 45 so you can even add one more right here and you also know that it it would pass to zero zero and you also know class that 90 over 2 is the same thing as 135 over 3 which is the same thing as 360 over 8 so all of the y over x ratios are consistent that's how you know that this is proportional Right, the equation is y equals 45x. Um, the slope is constant. That's why we know uh, we can write an equation. How fast is Mr. Cortez driving? He is driving 45 miles per one hour. Right kind of slow. A little too slow, in my opinion. Okay? Not bad. Took about four minutes, but maybe you can make this a little bit faster. This is all good practice class, just getting used to identifying the independent variable, identifying the dependent variable, uh, practicing writing the equation y equals 45x. Again, how did I know it was 45x? Well, it's because I kind of knew that the slope was 45 because it was going up by 45 every time, right? So I identified the slope. Um, we all know that we can calculate the slope by simply doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you just got to make sure that it's consistent. Um, I also knew that it started at zero because we didn't have any um, constant or value um, at the start of the drive. Okay, so number 12, a tennis tournament starts with 128 players and after round one, 
there are 64 players left. After each round, half the players have lost and are eliminated from the tournament, kind of like how a tournament works, right? Uh, therefore, in round two, there are 32 players. In round three, there are 16 players, and so on. Okay, so we actually have to de determine the independent variable and the dependent variable. Um, so the only thing I can say is there are players and there are rounds. Players and then there are rounds, right? So what depends on what? Would you say, class, that the number of players de depend on depends on what round it is? Or would you say the round depends on the number of players? Right, so I think it just makes sense to say it out loud. The number of players depends on the round. Right, so, so the independent variable would be the round number. The dependent variable is the amount of players. Okay, so one thing I will say, class, is every time that you see a graph, you want to make sure that you label your axes. A lot of students forget to do that. It's really, really important that you just label. Your independent variable is always the x-axis, so you label this as the round number which is like round one, round two, stuff like that. Your dependent variable is going to be the amount AMT of players. Okay, so we can already tell that if you keep having the amount of players every time, uh, the first round will lose a significant amount of players because half, the, half of the group will go away, right? They will be eliminated. So it starts with 128 players. So at round zero or in the beginning of the tournament, there are 128. In round one, there are 64, which is like right there. Round two, there should be 32. Round three, there should be 16. So it gets even less and less, like this is 10, this is 20, so this is 16. Round 4 should be 8, 5 should be 4, uh, round 6 should be 2, which is like really small, and then finally you'll have a, a victorious winner, right? So I'm not going to connect it because there is no half round, there's no 0.5 round. Um, explain why or why not that this is linear or not. This is not linear because the amount of people changing per round or being eliminated, eliminated per round is not consistent. We're not losing the same amount of people every round. Uh, if, it, if we were, then it would be a negative straight line. But since we're losing half the group every time, you know that this is not linear because the amount of people um, eliminated or being eliminated from the group per round is not consistent. Okay? Hopefully that was something that you could understand, and uh, that's really how a tournament works, class. Okay, so our last question. Your family buys a printer for $100, and the ink cartridges cost $25 each. The, ink, the number of ink cartridges purchased versus total cost be modeled by a linear function. Explain why or why not. It seems like this, the age-old question of having a rate of change um, notice how there's a keyword of each, right? The cartridges cost $25 each. And then obviously your printer will cost a certain amount, but you don't really have to pay that uh, over time. So once you have a printer, you have the printer. Um, can the number of ink cartridges purchased versus total cost be modeled by a linear function? Yeah. Right? 
we kind of know that the slope m, which is the slope, is going to equal um, cost of ink, right? And then the b value, which is your y-intercept, is going to be your printing cost. You have to buy a printer. It's just one initial fee. And you get 25x plus 100. Okay. Um, so can they, yeah, so yes. Um, I guess this should have been here, and I apologize. But uh, it says, can the number of ink cartridges purchased be modeled by a linear function? This is linear. Because the total cost increases at a constant rate, right? And it's really just dependent on the ink. So every time you buy an ink cartridge, the cost will increase by a certain amount, and it's the same amount every time. Okay, class, and that wraps up the the uh, lesson for this 7.1D lesson comparing linear and nonlinear functions. Um, I thought the first two pages uh, were really good. You probably want to try those on your own. And then we had these uh, three in-depth uh, pages that had a lot of writing, but hopefully you read this. And I know it looks kind of intimidating with all this writing, but it really is not meant to be super, super uh, complicated, right? We're just deciding if something is linear or not. Or just, there's so many things that we can do to, to determine if something is linear, right? I'm going to go back to this page, this third page of the lesson, and I would want to stress this table right here. This is something that we all want to review. Um, how do you know a graph is linear? How do you know the table of values is linear? And how do you know an equation is linear? Okay, so there's you want to be able to explain it in words and sentences why something is linear and why something is not linear. Okay, so please review this. All right, take care, everyone. See you next time.